In the original Killing Us Softly, I said that I would be asking of you something that no one has ever asked before, and that is to take advertising seriously. These days, we do take advertising more seriously. Advertising has increased from a $20 billion a year to a $180 billion a year industry. The average American is exposed to over 3,000 ads every single day and will spend three years of his or her life watching television commercials, just the commercials. The ads, as you know, are everywhere. They're on radio, television, newspapers, magazines, billboards, bumper stickers. Here, one company brags about its ability to put advertising in your face all over the place. And at the same time, everyone in America still feels personally exempt from the influence of advertising. So wherever I go, what I hear more than anything else is, I don't pay attention to ads. I just tune them out. They have no effect on me. Now, I hear this most often from people wearing Gap t-shirts, but that's another story. <laughs> It certainly is true, in fact, it's more true than ever, that advertising is the foundation of the mass media. The primary purpose of the mass media is to sell products. Advertising does sell products, of course, but it also sells a great deal more than products. It sells values, it sells images, it sells concepts of love and sexuality, of romance, of success, and perhaps most important, of normalcy. To a great extent, advertising tells us who we are and who we should be. What does advertising tell us today about women? It tells us, just as it did 10 and 20 and 30 years ago, that what's most important about women is how we look. The first thing the advertisers do is surround us with the image of ideal female beauty, so we all learn how important it is for a woman to be beautiful and exactly what it takes. Women learn from a very early age that we must spend enormous amounts of time, energy, and above all, money, striving to achieve this ideal and feeling ashamed and guilty when we fail. And failure is inevitable because the ideal is based on absolute flawlessness. She never has any lines or wrinkles. She certainly has no scars or blemishes. Indeed, she has no pores. <laughs> Women's bodies continue to be dismembered in advertising. Over and over again, just one part of the body is used to sell products, which is, of course, the most dehumanizing thing you can do to someone. Not only is she a thing, but just one part of that thing is focused on. Most often, the focus is on breasts since we are a culture that is certainly obsessed with breasts. And breasts are used to sell absolutely everything. The most dependable fishing line in the world. <laughs> Women are constantly told we must change our lives by increasing our breast size, and the stakes are high. Does your husband wish you had larger breasts? And if he does, the implication is very clear. You better change your body, as opposed to changing your husband. <laughs> Basically, we're told that women are acceptable only if we're young, thin, white, beautiful, carefully groomed and polished, and any deviation from that ideal is met with a lot of contempt and hostility. You never thought you'd lose your looks, either. And look at the kind of real contempt that there is for this woman who's portrayed as completely valueless now. These days, the greatest contempt is for women who are considered in the least bit overweight, as in this classic, I'd probably never be married now if I hadn't lost 49 pounds, which one woman told me was the best advertisement for fat she'd ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> the primary message that young women and girls get in our culture today is the message in this ad at the top. It says, the more you subtract, the more you add. What a horrible message. The more you subtract, the more you add. At least one in five young women in America today has an eating disorder, the most common of which are anorexia and bulimia. And if you think of an eating disorder as any kind of disordered attitude towards eating and one's appetite, it's probably closer to four out of five. Now, where else could this image of thinness come from, if not at least in part from the media images that surround us and that tell us in order to be acceptable, we need to be painfully, unnaturally thin? <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
No wonder we have the highest rate of teen pregnancy in the developed world. In general, teenagers are hypersexualized in our culture today. Here, a young woman, very young, very thin, walking down the street, envisioning herself in black lace. A magazine for young women and girls called Jane has on the cover an article, 15 Ways Sex Makes You Prettier. There continue to be lots of ads that normalize and trivialize battering. And battering is the single greatest cause of injury to women in America. Imagine an ad like this with a woman being shot. Trivializing copy like this, great hair never dies. Advertising is one powerful force that keeps us trapped in very rigid roles and in very crippling definitions of femininity and masculinity. Now imagine if men were supposed to play this game. <laughs> Wonder Jock, the strap for the bulge you've always wanted. <laughs> but nowadays, we're supposed to have plastic surgery, breast implants. The most important decision I ever made was choosing my spouse, the second my plastic surgeon. Most women who have had breast implants lose sensation in their breasts. So their breasts become an object of someone else's pleasure rather than pleasurable in themselves. The woman literally moves from being a subject to an object. And yet we all learn very early on that our breasts are never okay the way they are. Your breasts may be too big, too saggy, too pert, too flat, too full, too far apart, too close together, too A cup, too lopsided, too jiggly, too pale, too padded, too pointy, too pendulous, or just too mosquito bites. But with depth styling products, at least you can have your hair the way you want it. Now imagine being a, a young girl looking at an ad like this. It's clear from the copy that your breasts can never be okay. And the research indicates that the self-esteem of girls in America plummets when they reach adolescence. This doesn't happen to boys, but it does to girls. Girls tend to feel fine about themselves when they're 8, 9, 10 years old, but they hit adolescence and they hit a wall. And certainly part of that wall is this terrible emphasis on physical perfection. Men's bodies are rarely dismembered in advertising, more than they used to be, but this ad was so shocking that the ad itself got national media coverage. It's a good thing it got some coverage, I suppose. <laughs> Reporters called me up from all around the country and said, look, they're doing the same thing to men they've always done to women. Well, not quite. They'd be doing the same thing to men they've always done to women if there were copy that went with this ad that went like this. Your penis may be too small, too droopy, too limp, too lopsided. Too narrow, too fat, too jiggly. Too pale, too pointy, too blunt, or just two inches. <laughs> but at least you can have a great pair of jeans. In fact, in the U.S., I think we've all heard that all men are created equal. That statement was not a generic for mankind. Only white men that own property could vote, could have power. They really meant men. Women were too weak, too emotional. They couldn't make the good decisions uh, to be in power. Therefore, they were just to do what they were told. Here's a short film that talks about uh, women in advertising. We have a discussion open for, the, for these chapters now, so if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please go to the discussion for Chapter 9 and post your ideas. Gender and Sexuality Margaret Mead and Early Gender Studies will be looking at sex and gender, cultures with more than two genders, factors affecting gender roles, perspectives of human sexual behavior, sexual prohibitions, sexual orientation, and a summary. Let's take a look. But first, let's watch this short film. This is showing uh, how late in the game women 
began to be granted rights to get birth control if they were unmarried, 1972. To serve on a jury, 1973. Some people might like that. Women couldn't get birth control unless they were married. Oops, I did that one twice. Sorry, 1972. Women couldn't get an abortion until 1973. Women couldn't get credit cards in their name until 1974. Women couldn't sue for sexual harassment until 1977. They were supposed to take it. Women couldn't keep their job while pregnant until 1987. It's a woman thing. Get her out of here. Women couldn't refuse to have sex with their spouse, at least in certain states, until 1993. Women couldn't pay a man's, get, couldn't pay a man's rate for health insurance until 2010. Women paid more. Women still aren't paid the same as their male counterparts. These are facts about gender in the United States of America today. Sexuality and culture. Sexual norms affect sexual behavior. The sexual norms of a culture. They made up and shared ideas about sexuality, about masculine, feminine, other. And in different cultures, you have a different age that sexuality begins and ends. We saw the Maasai uh, having sex very young, not uncommon. Uh, the Dobi Jahansi. Ways people make themselves attractive is very cultural. Uh, up in the top here, I put some pictures to show attractiveness in different cultures. The importance of sexual activity itself. Is it for fun? Is it for reproduction? Is it a chore? And these things are all reinforced by cultural symbols that surround us or surround any culture. The gossip that goes on and the media that is uh, shown. November 18, 2015, we Googled, Googled objectification of women. Let's see what they got. I love giving blowjobs to sandwiches. I love sacrificing my dignity for a drink. guys that don't know my name. The pursuit of happiness, just as our forefathers wanted. I hope when my daughter grows up that she has friends just like these. The keys in my heart? A man that smells like a vagina. I'd sell my body for a burger. Nothing makes me hotter than watching a guy get his head blown off. I'm only here for your entertainment. What goes great with this dish? My butt. Obviously, my cleavage can sell anything. When I reach into my designer handbag, you know I'm naked. This shirt looks too good for pants. Peekaboo. Like what you see? Another example of the cultural projection of the feminine. 